Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, in this video, we will start populating our table with some records. So if you remember in the last video, we created our table called people and we populated this table uh, with two fields, ID, which is an integer, and name, which is a variable character string of a max of 255 characters. So now let's actually start adding records to this table. Now, there are a few different ways in which we can write our insert statement to achieve this. So first, let's just do an insert into, and then the name of our table, which is people. So insert into people, and let's just do values of one and Corey. So one will be our ID, Corey will be the name. Let's go ahead and run that query, and if we look at the data table and refresh this, then you can see that we have an ID of one and a name of Corey that was added to our table. Now this is a row in our table, this is a record. So now let's go ahead and add a, another record to our database. So let's do an ID of two and a name of Travis. So let's go ahead and run that query and look at our data and refresh it. And you can see that now we have an ID of two and a name of Travis. Now we can also specify the exact fields that we want to populate within our table. So for example here, right now I'm running insert into people, values, two, and then the name, the ID and then the name, but we can specify the exact fields right here after the table name. So if I type in ID and name, then these are going to match up with the values that I pass in. So two is going to get passed in as the ID, Travis will get passed in as the name. So right here, if I was to change this to three and then Dave and then ran this query, if we look back at our data and refresh that, then now we have another record in our database with the information that we inserted. Um, but you can also uh, switch these around to specify whatever order that you want. So that's one advantage to doing it this way. So instead of ID and name, I could do name and ID. And then in my values, I have to change these accordingly. So I can do a name of Bronx and I can give that an ID of four. So if I run that, and then we go back to our data, even though these were out of order since we specified the order here, um, if we refresh that, we can see that we have an ID of four and a name of Bronx. Now the values that we insert into our table, they have to match the values that we specified for our fields. So for example, if I was accidentally to mix these up and I was to do a name of Corey and an ID of five, um, but then the order was ID and then name. So what's gonna happen here is it's gonna try to insert Corey as the ID and five as the name. Now if I run this, you can see that I get a syntax error. So you can see that this error says invalid input syntax for integer and we were passing Corey as an integer and it didn't like that. And it even gives us the statement here. And if it was a longer statement, it would be useful to know which line that was on. So now it's not like that populated our database with bad data because uh, since it was an error, it never even got added. You can see that there's no ID of five here or name of five, nothing got added in incorrectly. So if I switch these back around and I do the ID of five and then the name as Corey, that's what we did before. So I can run that query, you can see this time we got no error, and if I refresh our table data, then you can see that uh, we added in the correct record. So there we go, I know that this was a shorter video, but we've added data to our table, and now we have several records to work with. In our next video, we'll begin looking at how we can retrieve values from our table using the select command, and also we'll use the where command, which allows us to specify exactly which records we want to retrieve. Um, so that about does it for this video. If you have any questions, just ask in the comment section below. Uh, be sure to subscribe so that you're notified when these future SQL videos are released, and uh, thank you all for watching.